you guys. All right, so talked to a few of my friends, and I know you guys want some discussion on bug out bags and what I would put in one. So what I'm gonna do is break this up in probably about six or seven videos about the different things I would include, and we'll go from there. I'm no expert. This is my opinion. If you've got any suggestions or questions, feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to answer. So the first topic I thought I would discuss is flashlights and electronics because we've all got a cell phone and it's our primary means of communication. So how do you keep your phone charged? How do you have light at night if you've got to navigate? we just start there and see how things go so for example I've got my San Samsung S9 it's what I'm recording with right now uh, it requires a USB-C charger and I've also got a few things that require a micro USB which is the smaller one for the previous generations of phones so one thing I've done is picked up these little converters and what they are is just a little piece that connects the butt end of a cable so for example this you probably really can't see very well from there it's got a little dongle on it and what it does is it takes a micro usb cable and you can plug this in and you can charge your micro or uh, usb c products with it so my cords that I have that I carry have got these on them. So the whole adage of two is one and one is none. So I carry two cords, um, the USB-C cords with the micro USB converters on. So for example here, I'll show you a few different things. Um, first off, you could have a source of power. This is a battery pack by O-U-T-X-E, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I've uh, reviewed a few of their products online before. So what it is, is it's a 20,000 milliamp jump pack or battery pack that has two USB ports and two charging ports here. So if you have a micro or USB-C, you can charge it with that. It also has a solar panel on it, it's drop proof, shock proof. Waterproof, I think it's IPX6 or 8, so it's only a few feet underwater, but um, everything seals with these little gaskets. So in theory, if you took a spill, this would still be okay. Um, it has a light on it. Let's see here. You can see that it's decently bright. It's got a few different settings. It's got a low, and it's got a SOS. got battery or indicator lights on it. It has six, so I mean, this one's almost dead. I was using this to charge some batteries for my flashlights. So this is one way to maintain some power. It's 20,000 milliamps. You probably charge your average phone four to six times, depending on the size of the battery. Another option is solar. This here is a little solar panel by Raw Power. Unfolds, I think I got this for 25 bucks. Um, when we had the PG&E power outages here in California, I used this thing to keep my battery packs charged. For four days we had no power. Um, it's got two ports, so I was able to plug in two of those battery packs. I've got like four now. Um, I keep fully charged. Never had any issues keeping my phones or my rechargeable lights topped off. So pretty lightweight, probably weighs about 10 ounces. So. Ideally, the combination of this plus this, where you can store your power so you can charge things even at night, gives you, in theory, all the power you need to charge your electronics, whether that's rechargeable flashlights, you've got a ham radio. I'm studying for my license right now, I do not have one at this point, or uh, cell phones. So another little thing that I've used a lot over the years, this is a light bar by Goal Zero probably about six or seven bucks now on Amazon. The 
this just plugs in. It's got a bar of lights on it, doesn't take much power. Um, use this a lot in fishing at night and navigating around camps when we're hiking and stuff. So it's not a ton of light, but it's pretty easily dispersed, so it gives you a good go through at night. So let's get on to the meat and potatoes. For me, that is flashlights. Um, I'm not saying that these are the best options, but these are options I've had for years, and I'm sure there's better technology out there. So what I have here are headlights, and handheld lights. These all go off or use rechargeable batteries. So these are the CR123As, um, and they work on these two mini flashlights. These are the SR1 Batons by Olight. Um, I think they're both about 400 lumens, somewhere around there. It's been a while since I looked it up. They've got about, I think, three to six settings, depending on the light. They work as, this one here works as a headlight. Has rechargeable batteries. So I walk my dogs at night. I bought uh, original batteries for, just as an example, this light here, which I think goes up to about 1,000 lumens. It's a Phoenix light. Um, I think I bought my original batteries in 2012. It's 2020 now, so you can see that you know they last quite a while. Uh, it's got multiple settings, including a, one of those strobe panic modes if you need it for defensive purposes. Really awesome. Um, I also have a headlamp here by Army Tech, which uh, is great. So it's got a, an indicator on it for the, how much power you have left in your batteries. Your, excuse me, single battery, waterproof, proof, shockproof. All the new lights are pretty much. So and those use the 18650 batteries, which are a little bit bigger. Let's see here. That's what they look like. Pretty good size. Um, you get most of these lights these days for around like 60 bucks. Batteries for around 10. Um, I highly recommend getting light like this. You know, it fits in your pocket. It's super powerful. And you buy two batteries for it, you cycle them. Um, they last for a long time. Out of the last eight years, I've had these lights. I've lost one battery has died, and that's it. So I've got, I think, now four of the 18650s, one backup for each of these. And I've probably got like eight for the small lights because I bought from this exact set, these headlamp and pocket light for my wife as well. So I highly recommended going with a rechargeable light. Um, you've got a power source. You don't have to worry at all about running out of juice. If you are in a bug out situation, having lights can be key. So that's what I would recommend. Now to keep those charged, this is, oops, this is a Nightcore Universal Charger right here. Um, gosh, I've had this since I bought my light, so it's about eight years now. Uh, Flex is here to put in those different size batteries. I think you can get it for about 20 bucks. Um, awesome piece of gear. Top all my lights off all the time. Never run my batteries down until dead. So I think that probably helps with uh, the longevity of the lights. Or excuse me, the, the battery packs or the batteries themselves. Um, a few other things that I'd recommend. Is, here's an example of one of the cables with this is a this actually is a USB C with the micro USB on it. I'm not gonna undo it all, but you can see here that it's got the little dongle plugs right in, so therefore I can charge. You know, I have one of these at my nightstand. I charge one of my pocket flashlights on it with, with this micro USB, and I also charge. Um, my wireless headphones at night. So therefore those are always topped off and yeah. So this here's another product by Nightcore. It's kind of a funky little thing. Um, so what it is, is it's a way to charge your batteries without bringing this big old Nightcore thing with you. So if you are hiking, camping, bugging out, what you do here is you plug your battery in, with these two magnetic ports like this, one will give you an indicator of your battery light. So if you can see, there's three LEDs on there. That means this battery's full, because I just charged this off my, the Nightcore Big Charger. So, two cool features about this thing. Um, number one, 
is you can plug this right into a battery pack and charge your batteries. Or you can plug it directly into your solar charger and charge your batteries. However, if you were in a pinch and needed to charge your phone, for example, you can see that this kind of pops off. So the USB here plugs in to charge, but you can pull out the micro USB wire there. And in my case, USB-C phone, I've got one of the um, little converters here. I can plug that in like that, plug the battery in, and I can charge my phone. So super, super compact charger. Um, I don't know if this works for like AA or AAA, but I will test it and let you guys know in the comments later. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Um, that were, however, super cool little piece of gear. Um, Olight makes some chargers that are very similar um, where it basically can charge your battery off USB. Highly recommend if you are going camping, planning to bug out gear or whatever, you get something similar to this by Nightcore. Um, let me know if you like. I can leave a, a comment in the description so it shows where to get it. Um, this is another kind of fun little thing, just suggestion, you know, not something I would technically carry, but I keep it around my house. So it's got this bar light on it. It's another product by Olight. It's waterproof. It's got two settings there. It's got a normal flashlight. I'm not sure how bright this is, but it's decent for around the house. It's got some emergency settings as well. Uh, I don't know if I said it, but it's waterproof. It's got a magnet on the back. So let's see, it's just magnetized, right? So you can clip it on something if you're working on your car at night or something. That's probably what I'll end up doing is putting this in my car. Um, it also has a plug on it. So you can use this in a pinch to charge your phone if you needed to, because obviously communication is going to be key if we're ever in some messed up situation. So I'd say that's got pretty much the majority of this covered here. So this is part one of the, the bug out series. This is about electronics, flashlights, and keeping communication. Um, definitely look at getting your ham radio license. You can carry ham radio. That's what I'm in the process of doing right now. Um, a lot of licenses are really cheap right now because they're trying to push it for the pandemic. So I got my license training course for $10 online. Um, I highly recommend everyone do it because if phone service goes down, it's going to be one of the best ways to communicate. A lot of the ham radio repeater towers are run off solar, so they're going to be around for a while. Um, great way to communicate with friends and family. So that's about it for this one. Um, I think my next video I'm going to look at what I'm going to call shelter, which is obviously something to cover you when you're sleeping at night or in the rain, and also clothing. So that'll be my next video. Please like, subscribe if you get a chance. I'd appreciate it. Um, and obviously any questions you have, just post them below, and um, I'll do my best to answer. And yeah, thank you very much. Have a good day.